See You Now is a podcast highlighting the innovative and human-centered solutions that nurses are coming up with to solve for today's most challenging healthcare problems. Created in collaboration with Johnson & Johnson and the American Nurses Association and hosted by nurse economist and health tech specialist, Shauna Butler. When I started this whole thing, I was really nervous. Mental health is a tough topic. I wanted to represent it well, and I wanted to represent our profession well. When I thought about it, I was like, okay, I'm a competitive runner and I'm a nurse and I'm a big mental health advocate. There's no one else out there except for me. And it's worked out way better than I thought it would. And I'm very excited. Welcome to See You Now. I'm Shauna Butler. During May, National Nurses Month, we're featuring stories that cover many facets of nursing expertise, talent, identity, inventiveness, and the actions that leaders, organizations, and society can take to support, protect, and invest in nurses. National Nurses Month serves as a call to action dedicated to highlighting the impact nurses have on people, communities, nations, and the planet. May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. This year, we're particularly mindful of the impact that healthcare has had on nurses, of the specific challenges and dangers nurses have encountered, endured, and continue to endure, and the need to express our appreciation for nurses in terms of bold, urgent, system-level action, support, and investment. In this episode, we share an exciting story of record-breaking nurses who've used their prowess as marathon runners and their profile as nurses to build awareness and rewire the public's image of nurses and nursing, what nurses do, what they're capable of, their essential and critical role in promoting health and running health systems, what they actually wear, and why it matters. Hi, my name is Sam Recker. I am a nurse and a competitive runner. I'm a mental health advocate. I recently ran the Boston Marathon in nurse attire to break the Guinness World Record while raising awareness for the mental health and well-being of nurses and healthcare workers in the United States. I'm supporting the American Nurses Foundation Wellbeing Initiative. How are you feeling today? I feel really good. I'm feeling really positive. It's Nurses Month. Do you want to go by Sam or Samantha? (laughs) It's been the hot question of my whole life. Just my parents have called me Samantha and all of my classmates and friends have called me Sam. And recently I felt like Samantha was more of a professional name. So I tried to take on Samantha and I am just not a Samantha. I am Sam. Think about identities. What are the identities that you claim and that help shape how you approach the world and how the world interacts with you? There's two that come to mind right away. The first being runner. I started running at a very young age in seventh grade is when I started running competitively. So taking on the I'm a runner identity started very young for me. Fortunately, running comes with a lot of really good qualities like dedication and motivation and that hard work pays off work ethic. So I've really enjoyed identifying as a runner. And then as I got older and into my professional career, um, I've taken on the identity of a nurse, which comes with a lot of the same qualities as a runner. So there's been a lot of overlap there, which has been wonderful. Say more about when you started running. Were you running from something or running to something? (laughs) I was probably running away from the other sports that I was not very good at and um, running towards uh, some success. I wasn't good at soccer, field hockey, or any contact kind of hand-eye coordination sports. But I was quick, so found my way into the track and cross-country programs at my high school. And those programs are just filled with really lovely people. Runners in general are just so friendly and kind and was such a nice community that I stuck and worked really hard and found some success in high school, which allowed me to compete at a really high level in college and then thereafter. Really high levels, (laughs) representing this country and the Pan American Games. You've had a lot of success from all of that hard work. Say more about the levels that you've achieved and what that feels like. One of the moments that I always draw back on is 
I was third at the U.S. Championship in 2018, and it was the same year I started my career as a nurse. So I did not have high expectations going into that race at all because I started working full time and didn't have as much focus for training as I normally would have. But that race really surprised me. I was not expecting to be third. I got a eight minute personal best over a marathon, which is unheard of most times. And that moment was just so incredibly one unbelievable to me and two so exciting and kind of opened a whole new chapter of running that I never thought I would be able to achieve or get into. And that is one of those moments that I draw back on when I'm like, Ugh, I want to hit my snooze button this morning. I'm really tired or, um, you know, maybe I won't run today. It's really rainy and snowy or cold or whatever. But I think back to moments like that and all of the hard work that went into that moment. And I would love to have another moment like that again. So, you know, when that moment did happen, I was drawing on the opportunities that got me there, like waking up early or maybe not going to a happy hour and instead going for a 10 mile run. So, yeah, I think that was just one of those days that we dream of as athletes that you're not ever sure if they're going to happen or not. And I was so fortunate to have one. And now that's what drives me to hopefully have another one or two in my career. And thinking back to the years when you were in middle school, high school, those are hard years, yeah. really hard years. And the role that athletics or sports or whatever it is that you pursue as um, a passion, as an identity, incredibly important in social and emotional development, in skills, in working together as a team and understanding time management. What were the things that you learned from running in those years that shaped you? The main thing that comes to mind that, you know, hard work pays off is so true in running. If you're out there every day putting in the work, you're going to see self-improvement. And I think that's one of the coolest things about running too, is you don't need to be the fastest. Everyone else on the team can put in the same amount of hard effort and see self-improvement. That definitely shaped who I am. And I'm so, so grateful for that. How is running or any sport, but we'll just use running. How is that helping manage emotional well-being? Running is nice because you can kind of escape. You can focus on your breath. It's almost meditating in a way. Typically in high school or college, even you run in groups. So it's almost like a social hour at times. But I think just getting that sense of pushing your body to a different way can bring your mind to a different place too. At least that's how I think of it. It brings you to another state. You leave behind school or whatever happened during your day and you come out to the track for practice and you're in a totally different frame of mind. You could have a really bad day or a hard test and come out and crush a workout and leave in a totally different mood. And I mean, that carries over to what I do now. I leave work as a nurse and go for a two hour run, (laughs) which isn't for everybody. But for me, that clears my mind. Say more about the other part of your dual identity of being a nurse. Where are you practicing? Who are you taking care of? What are you, what are you seeing? So I work in outpatient ENT, specifically the N of ENT. I work with noses. I work for two sinus skull base attendings. We do a lot of pre-op, post-op procedures in their very busy outpatient clinic. I work in Philadelphia. So I was not in the COVID ICU frontline type of a scenario that people may picture when I say I'm a nurse and I worked as a nurse through the pandemic. Having said that, it's come with its own host of issues. And I'm curious, when you make the distinction, uh, we have a lot of hierarchy in nursing and and that, that sense of one type of practice is more noble or more impressive or more prestigious than the other. Do you have any of that sense for you? I don't feel that way, but... When I was in nursing school, it was very encouraged that you go straight to inpatient, and I disagreed. (laughs) So I knew I did not want to be an inpatient nurse. I did a few of my clinicals in an outpatient setting, and I loved it, and it totally related to my lifestyle. I was running 
at a relatively high level at that time. And I knew that night shift and 12 hour shifts, which are really, you know, 13, 14 hour shifts would not work with my lifestyle and I would be absolutely miserable. So I applied only to outpatient jobs against all of my professors and preceptors advice, except for one who was a runner (laughs) and said, go for it. And I love my job and I I have skills that so many of my friends that went straight into inpatient don't have and they have skills that I don't have and that's totally fine. And for sure at first I got the question all the time, why didn't you go to inpatient or you need to go to inpatient at some point? And I was like, I really don't think I do. (laughs) I'm pretty good at this job and I think I could learn those skills. I have no doubt in myself and my training that if I needed to or wanted to, I could learn those skills. So yeah, that was a really frustrating response that I had gotten for a a while. I've proven myself in my job that, you know, now nobody bothers me about that. When we zoom back out, we recognize that nurses, we are everywhere. Everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Everything. (laughs) Yeah. And whether you're practicing in a school practicing in public health, in a regulatory role, working with a technology company, working with design teams to figure out service line performance, safety. There are so many different ways where nursing science and the whole person, whole community, whole planet frame of reference are incredibly valuable. You have been in this role of being a stigma breaker, somebody (laughs) who's raising the awareness around a range of stigma. And part of it has been in what nurses actually do, where they practice, and increasingly what they run in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, And then also stigma around mental health. So let's just talk about stigma in general. What's your, how do you describe stigma and what impact does it have on people? It's, a term that people throw out there a lot that they may not even know what it means. They know how it feels, especially around mental health. People have difficulty talking about it themselves or asking questions about it. As nurses, we're trained to ask patients questions about their mental health, nearly every interaction that we have with them. And sometimes those are very tough. And I think it's gotten a lot better. I think people are much more open about speaking about their mental health or speaking about getting help regarding their mental health. So when we think about stigma and mental health, what is the impact of stigma? I think access, access to resources, getting the help that people may need with their mental health, mental health in general. It's hard even when people are confident that they need help, the outside pressure that something is wrong with you in a way that may not be generally accepted by the public puts this unnecessary pressure on people to maybe not seek the help that they need, or it makes it much more difficult to pick up the phone and call somebody to make an appointment, which is unfortunate. And I've seen that a lot. And I mean, I've even experienced that when trying to seek mental health resources. So you have a very interesting approach Um, a very energetic approach, a very strenuous approach to (laughs) overcoming stigma. And it includes running the Boston Marathon with a goal of breaking the Guinness World Record for fastest marathon time of a woman while wearing nursing attire. Yes. Yeah. So nursing attire. And the Guinness Book of World Records had a very different idea about what nursing attire was. So... I had known this record existed because a lovely nurse broke the Guinness Book of World Records for the fastest female wearing a nurse's uniform in 2018 at the London Marathon. She wore scrubs. She was also raising money for a cause. She wore the scrubs that she wears to work every day. She actually trained often running to and from her hospital that she worked at wearing the scrubs. And so she did this at the London Marathon in 2018. And The Guinness Book initially did not recognize her record because they said it wasn't a traditional nurse's uniform. They told her that she needed to be wearing a white dress and a hat. It was something that we might think of as a Halloween costume. Yes. It mirrors what nursing was in, 
I want to say definitely yeah. a different century. Yeah. So do you know the story of Jess Anderson and her attempt to first break the world record? Yes. The Guinness Book has spotters at the London Marathon because they're based out of London. So a lot of people will make record attempts there. Like I think there are so many different costumes in a marathon because it's easy for them to do it there. So she wore scrubs, broke the record. They declined it because she wasn't wearing this traditional nurse's uniform that we were just speaking of. And she fought it nurses across the world and runners as well banded together and the Guinness book ended up overturning their decision to decline her record. And so it was eventually ratified and she is the current record holder until mine gets ratified. She wore scrubs and redefined what, at least in the Guinness book eyes, what a uh, nurse's attire for a woman is. So that was super exciting. And she is an absolute gem of a human. So I'm really proud of her for redefining for all of us what we wear to work. It's such a great story. I think she was really frustrated by the uh, different standard by which nurses were held than some of our clinical colleagues. Yeah. And so I think her main example is firefighters. She was like, you would never question what a firefighter wears to their job. Why are you questioning what we wear to our job that keeps us safe? Right. And and also, in order to break that record, the Guinness Book of World Records considered scrubs a doctor's uniform, yes. but, but not a nurse's. <laughs> yes. And, and I, I, what I love is how she rallied the nursing community around her. And it was this fabulous social media campaign. The hashtag was what nurses wear. And yes, to your point, nurses around the world <laughs> took yes. selfies and like, here's what this nurse wears. Yes. And, and it really was an important moment, I think, for nurses to gather together to help broaden and update the portrayal of what nurses do, the, the places where they work, um, the roles that they play. Throughout this journey, what are the messages that, that you've experienced that you thought, wow, that's just not accurate. That that is so not what nurses do. Before I really got into nursing school, I didn't really know what nurses did. I got into nursing because I had taken a health policy course in college. And that was when I learned about the nursing shortage and that nurses were really like the scaffolding that held together our healthcare system. And who I want to be part of that backbone. Um, so that's kind of how I got into nursing. But prior to nursing school, I had no idea that we are the last line for medication, for so many interventions. I feel like the world kind of always thinks that that's what the physicians are there for. And I think that's the biggest misconception that maybe the world has about nursing. And I remember one of the first days of nursing school, one of our course directors telling us, it is you and the patient and life and death. This is a very important job. That was so eye-opening to me. And I, I think so many people don't realize that. So many people don't know what what our job actually entails. I would love for the general public to understand more what we do. (laughs) So when people ask you, um, what do you do or what does a nurse do or what do nurses do? Again, they're not a monolith. We do all sorts of things from birth to bereavement and everything in between. Um, Mm -hmm. We're in boardrooms, we're on soccer fields, we're on running trails, we're in um, homeless shelters, we're in food pantries, legislatures. The comment that I have is, if you have a mission or a mandate to improve health or human experience, you need nurses. You've had so much attention over the last year or so about what nurses do. And so when people ask you, what do you tell them? What do you want the public to better understand? We're advocates for our patients and for our patients' family members. We are interpreters for what's going on. And then you step outside of your job and I, you know, find myself being a nurse <laughs> at all times, walking down the street using the skills that I use in my job. It's taught me to be a better communicator, have more patience at all times, whether you're standing in line waiting for coffee or walking behind somebody who may not be walking as quickly as you are. I think just coming um, with a different understanding of people from all walks of life. What about the science of nursing? People don't necessarily know nurses as scientists. Yeah, um, we are definitely scientists. I mean, 
we know so much about the human body. We know so much about medications and the way they interact with the human body, especially when you get really deep into a specialty. They are experts and it's incredible. We are absolutely scientists. I think we're artists too, balancing human emotion and connection and making sure that our patients are receiving the best care possible. So scientists, artists, jack of all trades. <laughs> So let's go back to this mission that you've been on for uh, reducing stigma, Mm -hmm. for improving people's health, particularly nurses. Where did you get this idea that you wanted to break the record for the fastest marathon run by a woman while wearing nursing attire? What was this moment of like, oh, okay, so (laughs) I want to break the record, but while I'm breaking the record, I want to do this for a bigger bigger reason. So I had a friend, a um, PA, we grew up knowing that we wanted to go into healthcare. We've shared a lot of highs and lows of our healthcare journey throughout the years, like since high school. And she lives and works in New York City and started off kind of at her dream job. She worked in a well baby nursery and just a general peds floor at a really good hospital in New York. Um, She felt like she wasn't doing enough. So she actually moved to one of the more inner city hospitals, very resource poor, but same patient population, general pediatrics and well baby nursery uh, at a children's hospital. And then when March 2020 hit, the hospital got completely converted to accommodate overflow for adults with COVID, essentially turned into a COVID ICU. She was one of very few providers, had never worked with adults before, had never worked in an ICU before, and was suddenly responsible for all of these people's lives with a disease we knew nothing about. So she did that for about a year, endured so much trauma, really, really suffered from anxiety and depression and PTSD. And it was this last winter, she was struggling immensely. I was writing her letters every day. I knew maybe if she went to her mailbox, she would text me about the letter and I really did not know what else to do. I was looking for resources to help her. She is somebody who is very well connected, very, very intelligent, was trying herself to get mental health help and was really struggling with getting healthcare trauma specific help. So I was helping her look for resources and I was having trouble. So then I kind of was like, oh, maybe I could break this record with a cause. I knew had just had done it for a cause. I was like, I bet there's some foundation out there that supports the mental health of healthcare workers who have struggled immensely during the pandemic. Because as, you know, devastating as my friend's story is, I knew she wasn't alone. And so I reached out to people that I was connected with through nursing school, through work. I spent a lot of time looking for different foundations. I have a small platform in the running world from the success I've seen in running. So I thought maybe if somebody caught wind of it, it could get big and I could raise a decent amount of money and got even more frustrated because it was really hard to find a foundation that supported you know, what I thought there would be many foundations for because there's such a need for it. And there really aren't too many out there. So I was fortunate that I got connected with the American Nurses Foundation. And they have a wonderful well-being initiative for nurses that offers free therapy and counseling specifically related to trauma from the COVID pandemic. They have financial consulting for people that may have been furloughed or let off from their job during the time or decided to leave their job because of the trauma. They have so many different well-being apps and podcasts that they offered as well as grief and bereavement counseling. So it was kind of exactly what I was looking for. And I was really excited that they were on board to partner with me. And then they set me up with Moxie Scrubs, who's a nurse-based scrub company out of Boston. They're a startup and they're just very nurse-focused, nurse-centered. They listen to what nurses need and what nurses want. So I found two really good partners to jump on board with me and And we got going and it was only about six weeks out from Boston. So we had a very short time and a lot of work to get the story out there. But the American Nurses Foundation did a great job and 
And we, I believe, are very close to $50,000, which is super exciting. So the Boston Marathon, how long has that been on your radar? What's, what's that experience like? Yeah. So I had run the Boston Marathon two times prior to this attempt, and I've run many marathons. I believe this was my 12th. But this was so special because I was stepping on the line with a completely different goal, completely different mission. I was wearing a full set of fresh scrubs. I've never lined up before in anything other than running clothes. So luckily my story had kind of gone out. So people knew what I was doing out there, but I had kind of a unique position being that I run really competitive times. So I was up at the front of the Boston Marathon. So it was really exciting because there was a lot of attention surrounding the fact that I was wearing scrubs. And the Boston Marathon in general is just so awesome. It's lined in the entire 26.2 miles with people and the runners who are there are extremely excited to be there because you either have to qualify or you have a charity bib, which people raise thousands and thousands of dollars for. I was kind of in a unique position where I had qualified and I also partnered with a charity, the 26.2 Foundation, which is another lovely foundation out of Boston. So I started with wave one, which is the wave right behind the elite runners, just because the mission wasn't to run fast. It was to raise awareness for the gap that exists in what healthcare workers need in regards to their mental health and what is out there. So I took off my hat for the competitive runner side of me and didn't put on a nursing hat because I didn't have to this time around, but um, (laughs) I uh, put on my full set of scrubs and it was awesome. It was so cool. I was, I've been telling everyone that it was the quickest marathon in my mind that I've ever run. Usually you're um, just yearning for the finish line. And I was hoping that it I had a couple more miles left because the support was unreal. I had just so many people cheering for me in scrubs like, hey, that's the nurse or like go nurses, even people within the race, like other runners and so many people saying, hey, it's so awesome what you're doing. Like great job, Sam and calling me by name. And so a lot of runners had heard the story as well, like, which was really cool. Boston's a really healthcare oriented city. So there was a lot of healthcare workers out on the course as well. It was also a gorgeous sunny day, just ideal. It is an incredible crowd, but you probably really stood out. There are not many people that they're going to see running the pace that you're running and doing it in scrubs, doing it in long pants, doing it anything other than running race gear. Yeah. When you walk to the start of the Boston Marathon, like everyone's wearing kind of clothes because it's a little chilly usually. And they have clothes donations on the side of the start line that like people will just donate their clothes that they're wearing. And when I wasn't throwing off my pants or my shirt, I think people were a little confused. So yeah, it was definitely different and definitely stood out. After I would pass a crowd of people, people would be like, she's wearing scrubs and that's the nurse. And it was really cool. Like, I don't think I went more than half a mile without someone commenting on it. And it was also just super encouraging that it hit the right audiences. When I started this whole thing, I was really nervous going back to stigma, just mental health is a tough topic. And I wanted to represent it well. And I wanted to represent our profession well. And I've never done anything like this. I've never put myself out there in this way. And I was nervous that I wasn't going to be the right spokesperson or be able to handle it. And When I really sat down and thought about it, I was like, okay, I'm a competitive runner and I'm a nurse and I'm a big mental health advocate. There's no one else out there except for me and really had to give myself a lot of positive self-talk before announcing that I was going to do this, but it's worked out way better than I thought it would. And I'm very excited. The scene that you describe of you running hard, doing hard things trying to accomplish a goal and having people along the side of you, cheering you on, naming you to say, Mm -hmm. there's that nurse and cheering you on. It feels like that's a really powerful metaphor of what might it be like, Sam, if in our professional work, when we literally are running, running to save lives, running to save limbs and people's function, running to save them from broken hearts, from mental stress, What might that work be like if we had people cheering all of the healthcare professionals on to say, 
thank you, go, you know, wow, look at that. How would that change our ability to do this really hard work and to stay emotionally and physically whole if we had that level of cheer and support? Yeah, it would be amazing. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, we got that. And I think people were really supportive of healthcare workers. And then that faded off pretty quickly, unfortunately. And it seems, at least in my experience, you know, the people who have had loved ones that have spent significant time in a hospital or in an outpatient setting getting treatment, they really do understand what we do and they are our cheerleaders. And that motivation and that encouragement that we're getting, that's just a little extra. It, it helps so much. So imagine if that was from the health systems that we work in and the community could really go a long way. And even more so maybe just our colleagues cheering on colleagues. I get a lot of support from other runners in the middle of a race that is so special. And if we as nurses cheered on each other a little more, I think that could go a long way as well. So Sam, to recap, remind us, what are you running for and why are you doing it? And how can people help support your mission? Yeah. So we as healthcare workers have struggled in our job the last couple of years. We knew this was going to be a hard job and it was going to be taxing at times, but I don't think anybody was prepared for what the last two and a half years threw at us. And so there is really a gap in what we need as nurses and as healthcare workers to help cope with the trauma that we've endured the last couple of years and the resources that are available to make our mental health a little better. So I'm trying to raise awareness about that gap over the next couple of years to try to get us back on track to the point where, you know, this job is hard and it is emotionally and physically demanding, but we're not in such a state of emptiness anymore. So I'm asking people to go to the American Nurses Foundation. They have an amazing well-being initiative. You can go to their website and they have a page related to my marathon run. I have it right at my Instagram bio. I'm at Sam, R-O-E-C-K-E-R. It's front and center. You just click on it and you can donate. The suggested donation is $26.2. Correlates with the marathon, 26.2 miles. Well, some people run this in kilometers. So Yes, true. So 42 kilometers is the marathon distance. (laughs) Um, So... How long is the campaign going to be running and open? So May is Nurses Month. I'm very excited to keep that open through the end of May. And then, I mean, the work doesn't stop there. I hope to continue advocating for this cause and being a mental health advocate in general. But this specific fundraiser ends at the end of May. So we've talked a lot about mental health, and that's your specific campaign. There's also physical health. And the American Nurses Association has a wonderful program called the Healthy Nurse, Healthy Nation. And part of this is driven by the data. Nurses are not the healthiest people in this country. And that is a result of the stress, the type of work, working nights. You know, we've heard so much about how hard, physically hard this work is and emotionally hard. And then it shows up in the inability to sleep not eating well, having the stress and the the mental health issues. And nurses are more likely to be overweight, to have higher blood pressure. There are any number of things. So the Healthy Nurse Healthy Nation program has really been focused on, we need to have a healthy workforce. And that healthy workforce turns out to be a really good role model for patients, for communities, for the public in general. So it's interesting that you're running (laughs) also fits really well into the the overall health goals of nurses. Say more about physical activity and the goals of the Healthy Nurse Healthy Nation. How, How can we address mental health and physical health? With one scheduled activity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, obviously running is my choice of activity, but any movement in general. I've gone through periods of time when I've been injured, overdoing it, but haven't been able to run. And I think any kind of physical activity is just improves my mental health tenfold. Just getting outside and moving is so powerful for our mental health. And for me, having a goal in mind makes it way easier. 
whether that's a race on the schedule like the Boston Marathon or just this week, I'm going to get outside three days a week and move in some capacity. You know, there's so many different ways that you can make realistic goals that you can hit. So then you feel really good about yourself when you hit those goals and it encourages you to then make maybe a little more challenging goal the next time. But getting out and moving in some way drastically improves your mental health and nursing oftentimes does not lead to an easy, active lifestyle, but really try on your days off to get outside and walk for 10 minutes. And if it's just 10 minutes, that's 10 minutes more than you were going to do if you didn't do anything. And there's so many correlations between mental and physical health that we could go on for hours. So what about doing it in groups, teams, in community with coaches? That feels like that's just such a key piece to achieving all levels of fitness goals, whether it's your physical, your mental fitness. And I think at some point we just need to refer to it as fitness goals. Yeah. They're not separate. Yeah. I personally love running with and exercising with a group. The accountability piece is huge for me. I um way more motivated <laughs> to get out the door on a cold morning. If the I'm the positive effects of stigma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, we always joke that Once you know someone really well, it's much easier to like bail on them. So the best running partners are the people that you don't know that well. And you're like, oh, I can't text them at 5, 10 in the morning and say, I can't go. But your close friends, you can be like, oh, yeah, sorry, sleeping in. Um, So no, I think the group community is awesome. So on a very tactical level, how does a typical day, how does a typical day look like combining training, working and pursuing your nurse practitioner degree. You're still, yeah. you're, you're doing more school. Yeah. So it's pretty planned out, but at the same time, I try to give some flexibility because you get a little crazy when you plan out every minute of your day. So typically I'll wake up before work and get in a run and then we'll go to work and then come home from work and do another run. And then the rest of the night is spent doing schoolwork, studying. So it is a lot, but this is what I chose to do and I wouldn't choose it any other way. Fortunately for me, the people that I run with are my closest friends. So running also serves kind of as like a fun little social hour for me. So I get a little of everything through it. How does being a runner make you a better nurse? And how does being a nurse make you a better runner, better athlete? Running before a shift completely clears my mind. I feel like I come in to a shift after running and just a lovely endorphin high mood. And so I am able to bring the best part of myself to my patients after running. And then similarly, if I run twice a day, which often I do as part of my competitive training, I can leave that nursing world as hard of a day as it was and go into my running world and just clear my mind in a totally different way. I think nursing makes me a better runner because I've had periods in my life when all I focused on was running and you can get really caught up in running. And for me, when I was only focused on running, I overdid it a little bit. So having something else to focus on gives me that balance that I need as an athlete. So yeah, they work really well together. You and Jess Anderson, two nurses, this story has really changed how the world views nurses. Not only what they wear, but what they do, how they do it. And I think also have let people know the amount of support that's needed. Not just nurses, but everybody in our healthcare workforce. This is hard work, really hard work. And having the support makes all the difference. People get better care, our health systems function better when we're all cheering for each other. So I just want to acknowledge how proud is a good word and grateful the world feels that you've taken on this really big challenge and put yourself in the spotlight, put yourself in a really uncomfortable position for the benefit of those who are having a harder time putting their hand up and saying, I need help and recognizing that that's a hard part, but getting the help has been a really, really hard journey. Your level of awareness and compassion for your colleagues and for others in making sure that that journey to really good mental fitness is much better than what it has been. 
And we need to have care and support and resources to keep us mentally and physically fit to do this hard work. So thank you for that. Thank you for that recognition. It means a lot. Nurse Sam Recker is an elite level runner, mental health advocate, and in 2022, ran the Boston Marathon in nursing scrubs at the lightning fast time, two hours, 48 minutes and two seconds, breaking the Guinness World Record for the fastest marathon by a woman while wearing a nursing uniform. Setting the record was part of Sam's larger goal of raising awareness, support, and funds for the mental health and well-being of nurses and the entire healthcare workforce. Her Marathon for Mental Health was inspired by British nurse Jess Anderson, who in 2019 broke the same record at the London Marathon, and in doing so, broke a significant stereotype that of the outdated nursing dress and hat description, the Guinness World Records initially applied as a nurse's uniform, leading them to disallow Jess's record-breaking run. Following a swift, compelling social media response of nurses around the world posting selfies, hashtag what nurses wear, Guinness World Records got the message loud and clear, reversed course, awarded Jess her record and publicly acknowledged Their understanding of nursing uniforms was incorrect, outdated, and reflected a stereotype they did not in any way wish to perpetuate, that they were absolutely committed to upholding the highest standards of equality and inclusiveness, and they are committed to cataloging the record-breaking feats which truly reflect the world we live in today. Jess and Sam's stories changed, updated, and broadened the world's perception of today's nurse, gave them the opportunity to broaden the conversation about what nurses do, the difference they make in the lives of people around the world, and demonstrated the significant impact one person leading change can instigate. As Sam shared, when she first went public with making her Boston Marathon race a message for mental health services for healthcare providers, she was nervous. She had never put herself out there in this highly visible way and wondered if she was the right person. Well, given how fast she runs, how committed she is to nursing and to the well-being of her clinical colleagues, she is exactly the right person for the message and the method. And it's turned out way better than she imagined. Every day, nurses and our healthcare teams are under extreme stress. And that was before the pandemic. COVID-19 poured unimaginable additional strain into their lives. The continued pressure on healthcare teams can result in mental health issues ranging from anxiety and depression and self-harm. For healthcare systems to operate efficiently and deliver high quality results consistently, it is critical that we protect and prioritize the mental health of nurses and healthcare teams wherever they practice. This Nurses Month, we acknowledge not just the dedication and brilliance of nurses, but also the struggles they face each day in caring for others. As Sam suggests from her own experience, imagine if colleagues were cheering on colleagues, getting support in the middle of the race or a shift. What a long way that would go in feeling confident and protected to do this hard and sometimes dangerous work. To learn more about Sam's mental health advocacy, visit her Instagram page at S-A-M-R-O-E-C-K-E-R. We invite you, no, we're cheering you on to support Sam in her mental health advocacy and to support those nurses in your lives, the nurses in your schools, at your clinics, at your pharmacies, at your hospitals, in your family, and among your friends. Check out the ANA's well-being initiative and explore what services would be helpful. Let your support and appreciation for nurses manifest in taking action. Because when there are healthy nurses, there are healthy nations. For See You Now, I'm Shauna Butler. Thanks for listening. Nurses are transforming healthcare through innovation, compassion, and leadership. 
and Johnson & Johnson is proud to continue its 125-year commitment to champion nurses through recognition, skill building, leadership development, and more. The American Nurses Association is dedicated to building a culture of innovation. Nurses improve the lives of patients and communities through innovative thinking, empathetic connection, scientific rigor, and sheer determination. ANA is proud to support and advocate for our nation's most valuable healthcare resource, our nurses. For more information on CU Now and to listen to any of the earlier episodes in our library, visit cunowpodcast.com.